In this tutorial we're just going to um, introduce the Aufbau principle for um, putting electrons into orbitals. Talk a little bit about Hunt's rule, um, how the electrons uh, actually fill those orbitals and, um, and basically explain the reactivity of the elements based on, on those, um, on the, those um, pieces of information. Okay, so if I just copy this in, I heard this earlier. So that's um, basically how the electrons fill up. This is called, um, well, it's just an energy level diagram, really. And I'm going to use um, a pre drawn electron, which is like that. Okay, so that's going to be one electron because in the first s orbital and you have to look at the the previous tutorials just to get a, a feel for what I'm talking about with these s orbitals and p orbitals and and d orbitals okay so I'm assuming you already have, have been through these tutorials to understand what I mean by these terms I'm uh, just going to briefly explain the electron now so if we think about the um, hydrogen atom so the hydrogen atom 1H. Um, I just change the color actually. So we think about the hydrogen atom. Basically, that's got one proton in the nucleus and one electron in uh, the first available orbital, which, if you look at this energy level diagram, is the 1s orbital. So the the um, the energy level diagram here is with one electron in is basically the hydrogen atom, the atom on its own. Now the stability um, of the elements actually comes from the filling of these orbitals. So once these are full, the atoms seem to be quite happy and they can stay like that for a while. So we know that hydrogen doesn't exist as H1, it actually exists as H2 in the gas state. You don't really get H on its own. So it has hydrogen, one hydrogen atom, connected to another hydrogen atom like that. Now the reason for that is because if you if you actually put the electrons here, these two atoms share electrons. So this one here, if I just redraw the second hydrogen atom in red, so we can show you the electrons for that. And I'll just add one electron here for that hydrogen. And if I draw the other electron here, down here, for that hydrogen, you can see that that bond is actually made up of two electrons. And that is basically how bonds um, look. They share electrons with each other, with the atoms. And they share those electrons so that these orbitals are full. And these are called the, um, the valence electrons. And the valence electron is basically the outer shell and we'll come on to that later so I'll go over the, what valence means later on. So the way I've drawn it there the hydrogen atom has one electron in the s orbital. Now this, uh, this is where it gets a little bit different and I have to explain a few things. The next electron to fill the 1s orbital, you notice this one is now upside down and I actually deliberately drew these that way as well because they have a quantum mechanical property called spin and uh, Pauli exclusion principle states that you can't have um, a particle sharing the same orbital with the same quantum numbers so if you look at the principal quantum number is 1 you have a magnetic quantum number um, and you have a spin quantum number so the magnetic quantum number for this uh, is 0 um, that just gives rise to the shape of the orbital, if you will. But if you look at the spin quantum number, because they share the same orbital, the spin has to be either up or down. And they can't occupy two uh, um, up electrons in that 1s orbital. And, can't, and similarly, you can't have two down electrons. Okay, That's the rule, and that is called Pauli uh, exclusion principle. So that's called Pauli exclusion 
principle. Okay, and that's that's the reason why they have one up, one down, and then that orbital is actually full. If you've got two electrons there, that if we draw that, um, let's draw it in green because I'm going to delete this in a minute. Um, that the that orbital that um, atom would be helium. Okay, helium, which is a second element of the periodic table. Now the interesting thing about that is it has two electrons. It's full. It's actually got a full, complete set in that 1s orbital. So that atom itself is actually stable on its own. It doesn't need to bond with another helium atom. So helium has a lot of stability because it's got a full um, orbital of electrons. And that's really important because that really defines the reactivity of all the elements in the periodic table, apart from radioactive elements, of course, where their uh, activity and reactivity will come from the nucleus. But the valence electron electrons dictate the bonding of the elements to each other. So we go on to the next one. The next one has an electron there and that would be if we do the periodic table that would be lithium so that would be lithium and I'll draw that in what colour should I do that in? I'll do that in um, like a pinky purple colour okay so that now is lithium now as you can see lithium doesn't really like being on this, uh, on its own like that as Li and he would rather have an electron in there but lithium can also lose that electron okay it can give it to someone else so that's why lithium will react to go back to draw this lithium plus okay and if you look at lithium in the periodic table, that will be in group one. Okay? And it's in group one because as you start filling these orbitals up, you see a trend. So the next group one element will probably be in this 3s orbital with one electron where it prefers to lose one electron. And that will be sodium. And we'll we'll come to that in a second. So the next element if we add another element now, another electron, sorry, I'll grab one of my electrons I preferred earlier, I'll throw that in there, that is now um, beryllium, so beryllium is the next element in the periodic table, and I'll draw that in brown, if that shows up, I hope that shows up well, so that would now be beryllium okay and that's quite stable like that so that doesn't need to form bonds with anything but that can actually lose two electrons beryllium can lose two electrons now to become two plus so you find this is actually in group 2 of the periodic table and you'll have the things here we we'll prefer to be in this oxidation state that's, uh, we'll discuss that in another tutorial what oxidation states mean but you find that these elements that have the um, s orbital like this can actually lose two electrons okay and that basically is how this reactivity and these trends are start to add up. Now we get a, a funny effect creeping in now for uh, the next electron. So these are a bit strange. So we put this in here. If we put this in here, this is called um, boron. So with this many electrons, this is boron. 
I'm not, I'm not going to go on about the um, the reactivity anymore because I just want to final finally complete this uh, tutorial with uh, Hunt's rule. So the way the next set of orbitals tools um, uh, occupy themselves with electrons is that the electrons tend to go in the orbitals in this way first okay rather than pairing up they tend to go in a separate orbital first and that's to do with the electron electron repulsion which um, so they would prefer to go in this orbital these different orbitals to minimize their energy um, but then once they are complete they start to fill up again like so so that um, going in singly is called Hunt's rule Hunt's rule I'll just write that up there Hunt's rule and that's sometimes called Hunt's first rule so that's Hunt's rule they prefer to go in um, the P orbitals singly and they, and if you get to the d orbitals eventually for the transition metals they go in singly too because that they just it's a lower energy state if they're not repelling another electron the pairing up of the electrons um, stabilizes the orbital but if it has a choice to go into another orbital it will be of slightly lower energy than pairing up so that's why they fill up that way and that can lead to explain the reactivity of the elements too and we'll discuss that probably when we talk about transition metals because they're the easiest to explain that rule so that's Hunt's rule so just to recap on all all, all the um, aspects of the tutorial today electrons add up from the lowest energy first and then um, go into the 1s, 2s, 2b, 3s and so on that's called the Aufbau principle. So let's find somewhere else here. Let's just move this down a little bit. So that's called the Aufbau principle. Okay, and that is the filling up of the electrons. The next bit. Um, we have the pairing up of the electrons and that's the Pauli exclusion principle and finally if I just get rid of that one electron there just leave it, I'll move it over the way out of the way and the going into the single orbitals first that's called Hund's rule so that's Hund's rule and that hopefully uh, should explain um, how electrons fill orbitals and that was the purpose of this tutorial but we also um, went into a little bit of detail into the reactivity but I'll cover that in another tutorial too and that explains um, electron configuration of atoms <laughs>